Today on Pro Church Daily, we're talking about how to increase staff productivity at your church. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you are going to get a daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift we've seen in 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by the boss man, it's Brady Shearer, and today we're talking about how to increase staff productivity at your church. We've got a team of nine people in house mm-hmm. here at Pro Church Tools. When you combine remote employees and those that work for us beyond our office, we're looking at a couple, eh, about 20 different people. And so we've got this question how do you increase staff productivity? How do you increase staff morale? And, and what's the workflow that you guys use to complete your projects? And mm-hmm. so we wanted to talk about all the different things that we do here at Pro Church Tools. In this respect, we are no experts by any means. I am the first to say that I am a joke of a leader and I'm just stumbling my way through that part of my job. Right. But we will tell you what we do. Hopefully you can glean something from it. Yeah, and we think this is directly applicable to what you do at church too because we're just, you know, regardless of what business we're in or whatever, we're just a big team of people trying to accomplish a goal similar to what's going on at your church. We think these are all applicable to church. Absolutely. So the first thing that want to talk about is something we call here at Pro Church Tools Monday Meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's the first thing that we do every single Monday. We sit in the couches at the center of our office, and I usually have a list of things that I need to go through. You know, I I try to mix it up and keep it fun. Maybe we have a fun question like, uh, what's your favorite artificial fruit flavor? The answer is... Fuzzy peach. Grape. Okay, so okay. then we talk about it and we figure out what you prefer, what you don't. And, and we also talk about the things that we need to get done for that week. And, and similar to your church, we've got different departments. We've got pro video yeah. announcements. We've got nucleus. We've got story tape. And so I'll be like, okay, pro video announcements peeps. What do we need to get done this week? And, and then we'll do the same with the different departments, mm-hmm. just like you would with your kids ministry, perhaps, and your youth ministry and, and the Sunday service and just going through everything. Uh, the second thing that we do is that For the bigger creative projects that we have, we use Trello for our digital and creative project workflow. So every single month, we release a thousand new video clips inside of Story Tape, and that's a very big project. And if we don't actually think through, okay, what's going live this week? What's going live next week? What is currently being edited? What needs to be shot? What's being uploaded, tagged, and named? Mm -hmm. Things won't get done. And so we use Trello for that. We use the different labels to say, okay, this is going live this week. Yeah. This is going live this uh, next week. Here's what we're shooting this month. Here are just a backlog of ideas. And, and so for bigger creative projects, that's what we use. Yeah, and something we love about Trello is that it integrates with Slack as well, which is our next talking point, uh, Slack, which is a, like an internal communications tool. But Trello integrates natively with Slack um, so that even if you don't have Trello open on your desktop or whatever, but you do have Slack or you have Slack on your phone, notifications active, whatever, you're getting notified about what's going on within those bigger projects. Yeah, and if we're using Trello for those big projects, Slack is just for that day-to-day communication. And even though we're all in the same office, maybe I'm not in the office, or or maybe we're on the other side of the office, maybe we need to share files with one another. Mm -hmm. And so Slack is integral to everything that we do when it comes to communication. Yeah. Another big thing that's been really helpful for us is setting deadlines. This has been helpful for my own productivity, but I've translated that to team productivity as well. Mm -hmm. And it's been especially especially helpful. You know, we're editing a video, let's say, for YouTube, and there's a lot that goes into it. You know, maybe it's a two-day process to do all of the editing. I'll often say to one of the editors, hey, I need this by, you know, end of day Tuesday. And that way in their mind, they can rearrange their schedule and prioritize different things to make sure that that gets done. I found that when we don't set deadlines on creative projects, they just go way longer than they need to. And I think that's just human nature. And I think that's in every industry and context. If you don't put a deadline on when something needs to be done, it won't get done. And that's why we do so much work on like Saturday evenings because we're like, well, Sunday's tomorrow and I've procrastinated but needs to get done. So I'll try to delegate deadlines to different people So Jonas right now is working on a video for this online conference that I'm speaking at. And I said, I need this by uh, end of week next Friday. And even though when I gave that to him, it was 10 business days away. And and that's almost like, well, why even set that deadline? It's so far away. He's got a lot of other things that he he needs to do. This isn't the most important task on his task list, Mm -hmm. but he needs to know when I need it. And now I can trust him to not miss that deadline. And that's where autonomy comes in. And and this is another thing that's been huge for us, Mm -hmm. where every single person on our team has something that they are in charge of, and if they don't do it, it doesn't doesn't get get done. done. And so there's this camaraderie and partnership amongst the whole team where no one is, you know, like, 
no one belongs to somebody else. Like no one is like serving under someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that can exist in every of course position and in every context. But what you can do in every context is give someone a task or a project or even an entire ministry, a department, a program that's 100% theirs. Yeah. And what that shows and demonstrates to them is that, hey, I value you. Yeah. And because I have first demonstrated how much I care and trust you, you are now going to rise to the challenge, Absolutely. rise to the occasion. And if you don't, you're going to be the one person out of the nine that didn't. Yeah. And so there's this accountability and kind of collective buying into well, I finished my video. Why didn't you finish all those customer support calls? Or I finished all my customer support calls. Why didn't you get that content done that you needed to get done? Yeah. And so when there's that accountability and everyone has their ownership in their specific case, there's that autonomy where you feel like, yeah, I'm in charge of this. And that gives people a certain element of pride. Well, and you'll see people in that environment grow as leaders as well. People who naturally, you know, aren't the one to, to be out in front, to be leading something, you know, to take initiative, but mm. somebody who is just more comfortable to, you know, be told what to do and just, you know, to check off the boxes, what have you. But when you give something to someone that they can own that, yeah, this is yours. And if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. You'll see them out of necessity have to take responsibility for that, learn how to be a leader in that, in that environment. And then who knows what, what the potential is after that, you know, further from that, what kind of leader they'll, they'll grow into because of the autonomy you gave them. I was thinking about kind of the day in day out work life of someone at pro church tools. We work nine to five every single weekday, Monday to Friday, but mm -hmm. I was just taking a quick audit of the people that work here. And just in the last week or two, uh, Mitch has come in early or he works from home. Ryland has stayed late. Jonas has stayed late. You've been up at 5 30 AM to do a shoot with me. Tristan has brought home an iMac in his car, <laughs> which we wouldn't recommend. <laughs> Roxanne brings her laptop home. And so there's a lot of, okay, I know I'm in charge of this. And so I have to work a little bit extra here or a little bit extra there. But I I think that's also balanced by all of the fun things that we do. So we're going to Wonderland, which is the local theme park uh, next Monday. We did beach day last Friday mm -hmm. when the World Cup was on. We were playing the World Cup all the time. Yeah. You know, that was on during work hours. We've got our ping pong table, our coffee machine and subscription, which I found out is the same coffee machine they use on the hit television drama Suits. Yep. So if it's good enough for those rich lawyers, it's good enough for us, good enough for Pro Church Duels. We do retreats. We do trips. You know, one thing I've been trying to do and will be doing through the rest of this year is giving every single person an opportunity to go on a, a, on one of these trips. So a lot of the times it's a story tape trip where if you're not a drone certified pilot, you can't really come. Mm -hmm. But when I'm speaking, you know, Vegas, Nashville, Atlanta, bring everyone, give everyone a chance to come so no one feels left out. And that way there's this good balance of working hard, but also playing hard. Yeah, for sure. And that ties in to really the most important thing for your church and for us as a company, which is having the correct North Star, the thing that's driving everything that you do. Because mm -hmm. I've seen in unhealthy cultures, if you are obsessed as a business with revenue, or if you are obsessed with attendance as a church, meaning everything comes after that and you only make decisions through that lens or right. almost always through that lens, it doesn't matter how many ping pong tables, cool coffee machines, or beach days you do, because you're just not gonna have a healthy work culture. So. Someone, a friend of mine tweeted the other day that uh, there's been another study that showed open office spaces are not conducive to the utmost productivity. Right. And I said, as a response, it was a little tongue in cheek. I said, that's because they're optimizing for revenue, where at Pro Church Tools, we optimize for fun. Yeah. And I jumped in in that conversation, in that Twitter thread, and said, you know, I've never been like more fulfilled in, a, in an office working environment than I have in this environment. And things like the, I, I brought up this specific example. I said, being able to get up from my desk and play ping pong for 20 minutes actually helps my productivity because when I get back to my desk 20 minutes later, I'm recharged. Mm. I, I've regained some creative energy and I'm ready to get back to work as opposed to just, you know, like mindlessly scrolling through social media when I'm just not feeling it. Cause you can't just sit down at a desk and work for eight hours straight and be at your best, be at your peak productivity. So all these things, um, and, and we have an open office space, but all these mm -hmm. things, all these, um, parts of our, our culture, our environment, um, our value systems, they all lend to, you know, happy people who yeah. get to work with each other every day. And I consistently, as the CEO, make decisions to prioritize freedom and flexibility or fun over revenue. And of course, I make decisions to prioritize revenue, of but it's a holistic approach where there's a reason we don't have any venture-backed funding, and it's because I don't want anyone to tell us what to do 
I want uh, me to tell us what to do yeah. because I think that I have the best plan and vision for the company that I think is going to be beneficial to what we're doing here. And so as a church, if all you're doing is prioritizing attendance, if all you're doing is prioritizing you know, giving, what that can lead to is no matter how many gimmicks or different strategies you try, if that North Star isn't correct at the top, yeah. it won't matter anything else that you do. You're right. Featured resource we wanted to highlight for today is the two-part church announcements formula. I've taken everything that I've learned from presenting more than 30,000 church announcements and put it into this guide. You can find it in the show notes for this episode of Pro Church Daily, and that'll do it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Pro Church Daily. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video. Hey, we like you. You like us. Maybe. Did you like this video? Hopefully. Why don't you tell us? Give it a like. <laughs>